Now on Denver 7 News at 7 a.m. on Local 3, more explosions overnight as the Russian invasion of Ukraine enters day six. The Ukrainian president accusing Russia of committing war crimes. On the road to rebuilding, debris removal in neighborhoods destroyed by the Marshall Fire could start today. We're live in Louisville with details on building codes homeowners want changed. And if the idea of springing forward in a couple of weeks makes you want to go right back to sleep, we'll explain how Colorado lawmakers are working to end those time changes permanently. Yeah, daylight saving time is set to start March 13th. This push would keep us on standard time yes. all the time. A lot of opinions. Go on this good thing. for us because it stays, it gets darker yeah, earlier. That's right. When yes. we have to go to bed so early. Yeah. yeah, that would help us. Uh, <laughs> uh, the sun is already up this morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. Meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo has a look outside. Nice forecast. Oh, it's so pretty. Take a look at this shot. This is from City Park, and we've got crystal clear skies, blue skies out there, and lots of sunshine in store. Low 40s here this morning in Denver, upper 30s there in Thornton. It's a lot warmer on the west side of town with the southwesterly wind right now our vada 48 and in boulder currently 37 so we are in for some really nice weather here this next few days even warmer than yesterday we'll be at about 60 degrees by noon and then we'll tack on another five to seven degrees so we're in the mid 60s here between about two and four 70s for parts of southeastern colorado very spring-like conditions here along the front range more 40s than 30s in the mountains now coming up we're going to take a look at the change it is still march it's typically our snowiest month of the season in here in Denver. I'll show you when that snow is going to return coming up. We have a bunch of problems now over across I-70, 270 downtown Denver. I'm going to start with the problem that we have right here on 270, where that's one of the major ones. Take a look from Air Tracker 7 as they're looking right after Vasquez. You can see that one car that's now getting pulled away from the guardrail, peeled it off, it actually started back there and then crushed it all the way to that point. So the left lane on westbound 270 is blocked and it is very much backed up. There's another trouble spot downtown. This is southbound I-25 right by mile high. You see the left lane is blocked here. The drive time now on that southbound side is over 45 minutes going into downtown Denver. Across 270, you're looking at 50 minutes of registering. I would send you on I-70. It might be a better option, even though it's 30 minutes. We still have another crash right here trying to get through that lowered section. So it's a real trouble mm. spot for us here. The 270, I-70, and getting into downtown. Debris removal could start as early as today for areas devastated by the Marshall Fire. Boulder County announced the timeline when they selected a contractor out of Louisiana last month. That company believes it can complete the cleanup by July 1st if the weather cooperates. But victims of the Marshall Fire in Louisville are facing another problem. They say new building codes could add a huge expense to their cost of rebuilding. Denver 7's Christian Lopez is live with the requirements they're hoping city leaders will temporarily set aside, Christian. Yeah, people who lost their homes want the council to suspend these new building codes that would make it a lot more expensive for them to rebuild here. And they held a rally this weekend expressing their frustrations. You can see that in this video. Now, these new codes went into effect just a month before the Marshall Fire hit, and they are upset because this would cost them a lot more money. Now, new homes would have to be net zero, and this means Energy Star appliances, higher insulation materials, solar panels, and things like vehicle charging stations. And residents say it would cost an additional $20,000 to $100,000 at a time when they're already dealing with so much. It's been an overwhelming experience. Um, no two days are alike. We're just trying to stabilize our lives. The council will be discussing this tonight. The meeting starts at 6 and they expect to hear from a lot of people who are passionate about this issue. Reporting live in Louisville this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Thank you, Christian. The Boulder County Sheriff's Office is also reminding Marshall Fire victims to remember to report if they lost any firearms during the fire. Uh, in order to report missing firearms, you do need the serial number. If you've lost that, you can call the place where you bought the gun and they should also have a record. The Isabella Thales Act went into effect in Colorado last year, requiring gun owners to report lost or stolen firearms. Last night, some popular musicians joined forces to support victims from the Marshall Fire. Okay. 
The Lumineers here, uh, one of dozens of bands, including the Dave Matthews Band and Ben Rector, who performed for this virtual concert. Tickets were $10 each. All the proceeds go to Marshall Fire Recovery Efforts, and the stream will be available until 7 o'clock tonight, so you can still buy a $10 ticket and add a donation, if you wish, to watch it. Turning now overseas, a convoy of Russian troops is moving closer to Ukraine's capital. Satellite images show the line stretches 40 miles. It comes amid reports civilians are being targeted by Russian forces. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert. Overnight, a new round of bombs hitting Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, as the Russian invasion enters day six. Now the International Criminal Court says it will investigate potential crimes against humanity in Ukraine. She's not. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky accusing Russia of war crimes. In this video from Monday, human rights organizations accuse Russian forces of using cluster bombs to pummel a residential neighborhood in Kharkiv. The weapon is banned by many countries. The bombs open mid-air just above their target, then rain down hundreds of smaller munitions over a large area. Zelensky also accuses Russia of using highly condemned thermobaric bombs, which draw in oxygen from the atmosphere to create a devastating explosion. Now Ukraine's prosecutor general is posting video and pictures to social media of damage in Kharkiv. President Zelensky also signing an application to join the European Union, a largely symbolic move because the process could take years. Zelensky also requesting a no-fly zone over Ukraine. But the White House is dismissing that idea. It would essentially mean the U.S. military would be shooting down planes, Russian planes. That is definitely escalatory. That is not something the president wants to do. This morning, an ominous new sign from the front lines. Satellite images now show a convoy of Russian military vehicles and tanks approaching the capital, Kyiv. The convoy stretching an estimated 40 miles. Meanwhile, in Moscow, the Russian economy feeling the shock of Western sanctions. Russians waiting in long lines at banks and ATMs, running out of cash, their currency crashing. But President Putin remaining defiant, calling the West an empire of lies. More than 400 civilian casualties have now been reported in Ukraine, but officials say the number could be far higher. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. President Biden is expected to speak about the situation in Ukraine during his first State of the Union tonight. He's also expected to tout progress we've made during the pandemic. COVID cases have dropped more than 30 percent over the last three weeks. Also, the White House says the economy will take center stage, especially with rising gas prices and high inflation. Iowa's governor will give tonight's Republican response. Kim Reynolds is the first woman elected governor of Iowa. She was elected in 2018 and has also served Iowa as county treasurer, state senator and lieutenant governor. The Colorado House passed a resolution to support Ukraine three days after it passed unanimously in the state Senate. And Colorado Representative Jason Crow introduced legislation in Congress to support an independent and democratic Ukraine. A Colorado coffee company is also supporting Ukraine. All week long, Dazbog Coffee will be donating a portion of sales to relief efforts led by the International Committee of the Red Cross. Dazbog was founded by Anatoly and Leo Yuffa, brothers who fled Russia in the late 70s with their family. What we want to do is we want to give back, just like the community here has given back to us. We want to give back uh, to Ukrainians and let them have the sense of freedom uh, that they've had uh, before uh, this invasion. And buying coffee is just one of many ways you can support the people of Ukraine. We have a list of other resources right now and ways you can help on the DenverChannel.com. The upcoming switch to daylight saving time can leave you drowsy, make you late for something, even create safety issues on the roads. And today, Colorado lawmakers will talk about getting rid of the annual time change. Denver 7's Veronica Costa joins us with this new chapter in a fight that goes back years, Veronica goes back a lot of years, Nicole, and just about two weeks now until we spring forward. As many of you know, that means we lose an hour of sleep. And you just said it, this discussion, it has been around for a very long time. It continues today and it's going to continue with Senate Bill 22135. That would keep us on Mountain Standard Time without daylight saving time, just like Arizona does. The bill still very much in its early stages. It was introduced back in February. 
If the bill were to be approved, that's when Colorado voters would actually come in. They'd vote on it during the November 2022 general election. And then if approved, that's when we'd see those changes go into effect. The state would no longer have to observe daylight saving time come 2023. We'd be in Mountain Standard Time the entire year. That means no losing an hour, no gaining an hour, though, either. So the bill still very much under consideration. Of course, we'll keep you updated on what comes of this. We're in Denver this morning. I'm Veronica Costa, Denver 7. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Thanks, Veronica. A new report asks, how happy are you? We'll reveal how Colorado cities measured up and the happiest spot in the country. A little surprising there. Uh, Major League Baseball is also close to ending its lockout. Overnight developments as Rockies opening day is approaching fast.